the final stage of uh, um, annealing is the grain growth. We have the first stage is recovery, second recrystallization and it is followed by grain growth. So, grain growth as the name suggests is increase in the average grain size and this obviously since the total volume of the material is constant will lead to decrease in the number of grains. So, you can see here a fixed volume of material with a fine grain microstructure when is undergoing annealing and after recrystallization. So, the grains will increase and this step is called the grain growth, grain size is increasing. But since the total volume of the material is constant, the number of grains because same volume is now divided into a smaller number of grains to have larger grain size. So, it is obvious that the driving force for such a process is the reduction in the grain boundary surface energy. So, the driving force is reduction in surface energy associated with grain boundaries. Let us try to do a simple calculation related to this. So, let us say that the initial grain size, so we are trying to calculate reduction in grain boundary surface energy due to grain growth. So, let the initial grain size be at the initial grain size be d initial d i and let the final grain size after grain growth be d f. Now, assuming a spherical grains for simplicity of calculation, So, assuming a spherical grains we have, so let us say volume hmm, grain boundary surface area initial final. So, the volume will be pi d i cube by 6 it will be pi d f cube by 6 and the surface area will be pi d i square pi d f square, but remember that we are talking of green boundary surface area and this will be area, area of one grain, but each grain boundary is being shared by two grains. So, green boundary surface area per grain will be half of this. So, 
So, the fractal half is coming factor half has green boundary which shared by two greens. So, now we can calculate the surface area per unit volume green boundary surface area per unit volume. So, we have the grain boundary area is half pi d i square and the volume is pi d i cube by 6. So, this will give you six pi d i cube by two pi sorry six pi d i square and two pi d i cube if we cancel pi d square will cancel and you will have 3 here. So, you will get a nice simple formula of 3 by d i. Similarly, in the final case you will have 3 by d f. So, the change in grain boundary surface area per unit volume will be 3 by d f minus 3 by d i and you can see that this is negative as d f is more than d i. So, there is a reduction, there is a reduction in surface area associated with this reduction, there is a reduction reduction in grain boundary energy per unit volume and this is what is the driving force for grain growth. three by d f minus three by d i times gamma where gamma is grain boundary energy per unit area. So, this is what in the way we can approximately calculated. Of course, recall that our assumption was of spherical grains and spherical grains of course, will touch each other only at a point. So, this uh, assumption itself is not correct, but an order of magnitude estimate can be found using average grain diameters using 
a calculation like this.